Testing, testing, one, two, three, one, two, three, just making sure that everything is working fine. Hopefully the audio is working fine as well. Just finishing some quick setup and we'll be on our way. Cool, 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 perfect. Nice, nice. Okay, okay, let's check our main scene right here. There we go. Nice, nice. Well, so welcome everyone to this first stream. My name is Abraham Leal, and today we're celebrating the release of uh, Final Fantasy 16, of course, and we're going to be modeling the Invictus Sword here inside of Blender. I hope to be able to get everything done, so all of the modeling, all of the um, UVs and rendering, texturing rendering, so so that we can get a very, very nice result. And uh, I'm thinking about having this available for free as well, the final STL file in case anyone wants to like 3D print it or something. So yeah, I know that right now, um, we're just starting the stream, so if you have any questions, I got my chat over here, so I am going to be explaining the whole process, and yeah, this is a full, like, uh, a full, what's the word, um, workflow or, or demonstration of how we do the things here inside of the 3D world. So I'm going to close my Pure Ref for now. Uh, Pure Ref is a software that we use for for reference gathering and uh i was i was doing some research and i realized that someone actually did the sword in real life for promotion of the game and that's really really cool so we're actually going to be using this one quite a bit because it's a very nice front view of the sword and we can like very nicely see all of the details that we have right here i actually think this sword is an excellent example to to start learning uh, 3d because it's not that complicated and it does involve some like important aspects that we that we take into consideration whenever we're building uh, props for our games. So yeah, let's get to it. I'm gonna I'm gonna close Pure Ref for now, but we're gonna bring that image in just a second. So I'm gonna be using Blender. I've been using Blender lately, and it's uh, it's a really really fun software, and it's free. I mean, come on, who can't complain about a free software, right? Let me just I'm gonna also start doing the um, I'm gonna be recording this for a a later upload in the in YouTube. So yeah, let's start. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my front view and I'm going to press X, sorry, Shift A, and we're going to bring in our uh, image plane. So we're going to get image and we're going to bring in a reference image. Let's go here to our assets. And I got this, is this the front view. Yes, there we go. So as you can see, this is the image that we're mostly going to be using. However, the thing that I don't like about this sword is that we don't have the blade. Like We're not seeing the rest of the blade. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to bring another image. It's going to be another reference image and it's going to be the main sword right here. So let's move this one to the side. There we go. So as you can see, this one has the full blade, but unfortunately, it's not a perfect front view. So it could be a little bit complicated to um, to see the whole thing. So we're going to be using this as a sort of reference, and this one's going to be our main element. I'm going to press the G and C to bring this up. It's actually very, very center right there. Maybe slightly, slightly rotated. So I'm just going to rotate a little bit right there. Again, G and C to bring this up. And... Um, as for the size, I think the size is a little bit big, so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to bring this one right here. I'm going to try to make the elements match a little bit closer. There we go. So that we can pretty much, as you can see here, we're going to do a, a little bit of a, of a merge here so that we can see the, the both swords very nicely on our scene. So now that we have this, what we're going to do is we're going to bring this um, into the background. So we're going to use a transparency to push these guys into the background. This one, I'm actually going to move to the side. I'm going to focus on this first part uh, to begin with. So I'm going to go to the texture options right here, turn on opacity and bring the opacity down to something like 0.5 so that we can see our grid and it's a little bit easier to, to work with. And um, if we take a look at the palm mold, you're going to see that it's made out of a couple of different pieces. We got the, the main handle right here and then we got this base that attaches to the sword and this little element over here so let's start with that one i think that's the probably the easiest and the simplest one to start with so i'm going to press a shift a and i'm going to go to mesh and create a cylinder i'm going to press a g and z to bring the cylinder up and we're going to scale it down so we can get the proper size there we go ajesh how are you my friend welcome welcome to the stream 
This is our first stream here, well, our first official stream here in Twitch. I'm gonna scale this down a little bit more, and now I'm gonna go to vertex mode, and we're gonna grab all of this vertex and push them all the way up. And then this one's GNC and push them all the way down. As you can see, there's a little bit of a scale here, so I'm gonna scale this up, and over here, I'm gonna scale this down just a tad bit, something like that. There we go. And if we take a look at the reference, you're going to see that right in the middle of this whole thing, we got this metal bit, right? So it's a little bit under the, um, there's the red, oh, there's the red area. Let's bring the image a little bit closer. There we go. Yeah, so it's the red area right there. And right around there, we have that uh, metal frame. So let's add it. I'm going to go again to my object here. And we're going to go to edit mode. Let's go to edit mode and we're going to use our loop cut to add one cut on the top right there. There we go. So it's going to be one and then a second one right there and the third one right there. And again, if we take a look at the image, it's, it's a very simple element. So we're just going to grab that edge loop right there and we're going to scale it up with shift to get a little bit more control probably bring it down a little bit and I'm going to bevel it. So I'm going to bevel that whole edge loop right there. Yeah, we compare it to our image and just make sure that we have the proper size. I feel like mine's a little bit short still. So I'm going to scale all of those faces a little bit more like that. There we go. I'm going to use a G and Y to push this image back. And here's what we're going to do. Kelvo, how are you, my friend? I'm doing good, doing good. Really happy to be here. Finally, back in one of our streams. How are you doing? Okay, I'm gonna right click and shade smooth to to make this well smooth. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Now for this part right here, um, there's always a question like, should we do separate assets or should we keep everything in the same asset? It really doesn't make that much of a difference from a from a game perspective. Like uh, as long as the object's not gonna deform, you really don't have to worry too much about it. But in this particular case. I think it might be a good idea to keep it on the same object. So I'm going to go back to uh, edit mode on the object here. Let's go to face mode. I'm going to grab the face on the top. There we go. And then I'm going to extrude up to generate the first sort of like element there. I'm going to extrude up again. And then I'm going to scale out to get the proper height. And then extrude up again. And extrude up one final time to push this oh, to push this up. I think I got a double extrusion there. Let's do it one more time. So extrude once and then extrude twice and scale that in really, really close. There we go. So that's going to give us the, the sort of like shape that we're going for right here. I do think this faces are uh, a little bit like up. So I'm going to bring them down a little bit more. There we go. And finally, I'm going to go down here and here's where, where things get a little bit um, interesting because as you can see, we have this metal bit, but this metal bit has a triangle right there. And um, that sort of like shape, we need to find a way to incorporate that shape into the design. So for this particular piece, I actually recommend doing a separate element. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to press shift A and create a new uh, cylinder. And with this new cylinder, I'm going to bring it up and scale it in. One thing I can do is I'm going to grab this one and just hide it for a second so that it's not distracting. I'm going to use this one to build this triangular looking shape. But in order for me to properly build it, one of the things that I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to select this face up here and uh, this face up here, and we're going to delete the faces. Why? Because that way we're going to have a little bit more control over that face. When, whenever you have a cylinder and you have a face on the top, it becomes a pole. And the problem with the poles is that you cannot modify them easily. So usually we, we don't work with poles. And now we're going to go into vertex mode, wireframe, so that we can grab both sides and just a GNC and start pushing this guys up. There we go. Nice. So by doing this, we've uh, successfully captured the sort of like a triangular looking shape. I think we can push this guys a little bit up. There we go. If we want this to be a little bit more like 
straight. We can push this guy down. We can even grab all of this. Here's a quick trick. A G, C, and then zero. Actually, let me, why am I not using my my navigation tools here? <laughs> I got my screen caps and uh, I was not using them. There we go. So on this like uh, left side of the screen, you can see the, the screen caps. And, um, and that way you can follow along with all of the shortcuts. So again, one very quick shortcut to scale everything together into a single plane, doesn't matter which axis you're using, is a G for grab, or sorry, S for scale, and then the axis, in this case, Z, and then zero. And that's gonna flatten everything into a single element. So yeah, that's it. Ooh. Now I'm gonna grab all of the edges right here, G and C, push them up, scale them out to get the sort of triangular looking shape. And then we don't have the face anymore. Here, a, a face might actually be good or easier because we could just like extrude and create this whole uh, section. We can bring it back and it's actually very, very simple to bring it back. If we go to face mode or to edge mode and just select the whole edge, we can just press F and that's gonna fill the whole object. This is an angon. We don't use angons in games, so we gotta be very careful about that one later on. But for now, it's gonna give us a very nice uh, effect. We got the Philip on the chat. What's up, my friend? Welcome, welcome to our first official stream here on Twitch. Well, the first official stream under the new brand, I would say. Let's extrude again, bring this out, uh, scale this up a little bit, and then extrude again, bring this down, scale up a little bit, extrude down, bring this out. There we go. Scale, oh, extrude, sorry. And then extrude, bring this down, and scale in. Thanks, my friend. Yeah, I'm really excited about the, the new direction as well. I uh, I was hoping that the video where I explained the the departure could stay up, but I understand that it's a, it's a complicated situation whenever the sort of things happen. Let's go here. Let's now delete this. Um, actually, no, I, I don't really need to delete it. But what I want to do here, this is very important, is I do want to create a little bit of an edge loop on the upper side. Because without an edge loop, it's going to be very difficult to, to properly generate the effect where this thing is actually hugging the surface. As you can see, we get this very empty space. And another thing, if we eventually want to 3D print this element, is that we need to make sure that not, we don't have any like non-manifold geometry. No, there's no way to see it, unfortunately. Um, again, as I was mentioning, I, since I'm no longer in, in the team, um, I don't have access to, to the channels, so they they took it down, um, and uh, it's not possible. <laughs> but but I'm here. That's the important thing. I'm here, and uh, we're going to continue doing 3D. There we go. So I'm going to grab this whole thing right here, and what I'm going to do is I am going to do a extrusion. So I'm going to extrude. But we're not going to extrude region, we're going to extrude along normals. Let's see how we get this. There we go, that's a lot better. So I'm going to extrude in and then a G and C to push this up a little bit. And as you can see, that's going to create a nice little lip that's going to allow me to connect to the next part of the element and therefore uh, generate a nicer uh, a nicer effect. So let's, uh, let's hide this under for just a second. And the next thing that would be uh, important, to be honest, would be to somehow like fill this whole thing in as well. But I think we're gonna worry about that a little bit later. For now, maybe just scale this a little bit more. There we go, that's a little bit better, perfect. Maybe, no, that's fine. Because again, it's gonna be on the inside, so we're not really gonna see it as much. Yes, yes, Phantom, we got a new course coming. Um, it's going to be a weapons course, which is something that people have been asking about. So it's a weapons for games course. I expect to be releasing that one probably at the end of next week. If everything goes according to plan, we're probably going to have the next course available very, very soon under the new brand. Yeah, yeah, right. Let's go. Cool. So now that we have the, the basic shape here of the pommels, one of the things that I want to do is I'm going to be adding some support edges so that we can get some really nice crisp edges. This is not, by the way, this is not going to be a, a weapon for games. Like I'm not going to be doing the whole like uh, uh, preparation of like retopology and, and optimization and stuff. I just want to make a cool model out of this. So the thing is, if we grab this element right here and we throw in a, a what's the word, a subdivision modifier, you can see that we will lose a lot of that very like crispy lines that we have. 
have. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go, we're going to turn this off for just a second and we're going to go to several elements. Let's apply transforms first. We're going to go to several elements, especially edge loops, and we're going to bevel those edge loops. So for instance, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. That one. And uh, that's pretty much it. So we're going to grab all of those edge loops and we're going to bevel them a little bit and give them two subdivisions, so two segments. That way, when we turn on our subdivision modifiers, you can see everything remains very, very crisp. Look at that. Way, way, way better. Now, on this side right here, you can see that we have a very, a very bad like the thing, like a very bad distortion. That's because we have this face right here. So again, since we're not really going to be using it, we could delete this face or another option is to just go to this edge right here and also bevel it. Just bevel it with a couple of subdivisions. And that way, when we turn out our subdivision modifier, that element right there is going to be really, really, really clean. There we go. Whoa, Philip, thanks for the subscription, man. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I was not expecting that, but thank you. <laughs> Let's add another subdivision surface right here. And uh, now we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to add some support edges to this guys right here so that the whole element looks or it gives us a, a more like tight result. So we're going to bevel. Again, uh, another thing previous to doing that, we need to apply the transforms because we did modify the, the elements uh, quite a bit. So this could generate some weird effects. Let's go. So now we bevel. There we go. It's going to be a small bevel, two segments. And now if we turn this on. Much better, much, much better. Oh, it seems like we I accidentally selected some things that I didn't want to. Okay, let's start again. So that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one, we bevel with two divisions. And then this is going to be a very important one. We're going to also add a bevel right there to keep this really, really, really sharp. Let me isolate the object so we can work a little bit better. There we go. And last but not least, just a shade smooth to get this very, very nice effect. Yeah, guy is now going to be, uh, I think we, we have new, um, what's the word? We have new levels for our Discord channel as well. So uh, if you, of course, support us here on Discord, we get like different tiers for you guys. There we go. So yeah, that's it. We got the, the basic shape here of the pommel. Of course, the textures is something that we're going to have to do a little bit later. Uh, but so far, the, the elements looking quite, quite nice. I do want this thing, the, the, the point to be a little bit sharper. So I'm going to show you guys a very like, it's not super advanced, but it's a little bit more advanced. I'm going to add a couple of support edges here. And then Here's the, the technique because I don't want to add two lines that are going to go all the way across my cylindrical object. That's going to create some very, very weird effects. So I'm going to use my offset edge loop. But before doing that, I need to delete some faces. So I'm going to delete like this face right here. I'm going to hit X, delete faces. And I'm going to delete this faces right here. X, delete faces. So now well, if we go to offset tool, we can oh, offset edge loop. Let's go to. There we go. We're going to add a couple of lines right there. And a couple of lines right there. So when we do this, as you can see, the the like the point is going to be a lot sharper. But then what we have to do is we need to select this vertex right here and merge them at center. On the inside, we really don't need to do that. But here on the outside, we definitely do need to do that. So we're going to merge at center. And now the only thing that we need to do is in edge mode, just fill this guys back again. So as you can see, we're going to have a really strong pinch right there on the on the point of the triangle. But that should allow us to have a really sharp triangle without affecting the underside of the element. Yes, there's a little bit of a pinch right there, but it's uh, it's so minor that we really shouldn't be bothered by it. Um, no, it's fine. It, it actually, I, I've been using Maya for 12 years, Philip, so I understand what you what you mean. Andy, welcome to the to the stream as well. And um, it's um, 
it's a lot easier to switch, I think, than it is to um, than it is to to like just ignore it. The thing is, Blender has so many useful tools that I I do think it's very valuable to have as a like as a secondary uh, secondary like option. To be honest, let's add one more loop cut down here to make sure that that piece looks really really strong. There we go. Cool. Now we're going to jump on to, let's see, which piece? I think this one, like the handguard. This handguard right here looks like a really nice one. And I'm going to be able to talk about one of my favorite topics in the 3D world, which is um, topology, like making sure all of your edge loops flow very, very nicely. So I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to create a plane. And I'm going to bring this plane all the way up here. Rotate on the Y axis, or sorry, in this case is the X axis 90 degrees so the plane is facing us and we're going to scale the plane down there we go there is one tool that i do miss from maya and that is the uh, quadro tool i would love to have the quadro tool by default here there are some like alternatives but uh yeah it's uh it's not as good so Topology. Topology is super important, especially when we're working with subdivisions like surfaces, because we want to make sure that everything flows and deforms in a nice way. And topology, it might not seem like like it's that important, but recruiters, especially if you're aiming to work at a, at a professional studio, they do look at the sort of like topology that you're using to make sure that you get a very nice result. So I'm going to go to edit mode, edge mode, edge mode, edit mode, and then we're going to grab this edge right here. and I'm going to extrude this out and then extrude this out again. And here is where I'm going to use annotations very quickly. So what we want is we want to capture this flow right here with a nice topology generating this sort of curves. OK, so that's kind of like the topology that we're going for right here. And swords and weapons are very, very cool because you can you can get a, a very nice sense of how the topology should flow depending on the like the borders of your object. Let me erase this real quick. There we go. So let's go back here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up right there. And then I'm going to keep on working on the edge right here. Let's go to wireframe so that we can see this a little bit better. And my best advice for building proper topology is always try to start with simple shapes. Like don't try to do a lot of uh, like angles and points because you're going to go crazy very, very quickly. So for instance, a good rule of thumb is that every single curvature should have around three divisions. So right here, for instance, this three divisions is more than enough to capture the curvature here of the of the hand guard. Now the hand guard is not symmetrical, so that means that we can just keep going with this guy and make sure that we get the same edge. Uh, there's a very interesting tool that Blender has. Here's a, a quick trip uh, or trip trick tip trick. <laughs> Here's a quick trick, which is just to press E. If you press E on a vertex, you're gonna extrude the vertex. It's, it's really, really bizarre, especially like for me coming from a, from a um, what's the word, a Maya uh, background. It's very bizarre to be extruding a vertex. But now that we've extruded the vertex, you can just grab the two edges that we get and just fill them in. So I guess this is kind of like the, uh, what's the word, kind of like the uh, quadro tool, which again, it's a little bit bizarre, but it, uh, it, it works very nicely. So again, you just grab a vertex, press E, and you extrude this vertex a couple of times. And that way you can create your little edge loop going around the weapon. And that's it. Now we go to um, edge mode again and just fill. And fill is like a bridge. So we just bridge and there we go. We've successfully created the, the effect. Now that we have this, it's very, very important to, um, to push this right here. Let's see, Philip says, a real downside for me with Blender is the viewport performance. You can't really import high poly scans like system. Yeah, 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 you're, you're right there. Um, and I think they are working on some like uh, like things for the future versions. But yeah, I, I've actually like found that the performance, especially in sculpting mode, when you're going really, really high, even with a high end machine, like my machine is not like super, super high end, but it's quite strong and um, and I still struggle quite a bit. There we go. So now we need to find a way. Well, let's just finish this thing right here. So I'm going to go to edge mode, just extrude this all the way to the to the center line. And this one as well, all the way to the center line. And uh, yes, you can see it's pretty, it's a pretty straight like effect right there. So now the the challenge is that we need to fill 
all of these elements right here, right? Like all of the inside. And here's where people start freaking out because they don't really know how to properly like solve this puzzle. That's why I personally love topology. I'm a huge fan of like Rubik's cubes. I, I have mine uh, over at the house. And um, and for me, like topology is kind of like a Rubik's cubes because I need to solve it in the best possible way to ensure that we get the really, really clean, like um, really clean flows overall. So for instance, right here, I can see that this point right here, it would be very nice if we could connect it to this point down here. So I'm gonna go to this edge right here and I'm gonna extrude this edge down. Oh, let's go here, extrude this edge down. But then I, I don't wanna have the, the vertices being like, like this. So, so I'm gonna grab this guy right here and try to keep it at the center line right around there. And then this edge, and this edge, we're going to extrude up. And again, remember the trick, S, Z, 0 to flatten them out. Oh, there we go. Then this line right here, we can also extrude down. And if you have two vertex, you can just press the letter uh, M and merge them at the center. So for instance, these two guys, let's merge at center. These two guys, let's merge at center. And these two guys, let's merge at center. So that way, we've successfully created a very nice union of these two guys. And the reason why this union is important is because when I add a support edge that goes in this like particular um, point, it's gonna flow and help me with this particular point on the underside. So I'm saving myself, I'm, I'm kind of like reusing edge loops to make sure that I don't have to insert more points that I need. Here, I'm gonna do the same thing. You can see that we can't really like mix these two guys together easily. So in order to, to properly do that, I'm gonna have to uh, add another edge loop with loop cut right there. I'm gonna also add one more right here because I already know that we're gonna need it. And uh, then, just to make this a little bit easier, I'm just gonna grab this guy right here, extrude it to the center, and then I'm just gonna fill all of these elements right here. So fill, fill, and fill. And see how everything flows? Quads, all quads, all vertical and horizontal. That's the kind of stuff that we wanna that we wanna go for. And that's the kind of like good result that we're gonna get for our topology. And then on this part right here, we also wanna have a, a very nice, um, what's the word? A very nice like flow here on the center. And you can see that we're not gonna be able to do that easily because we have a couple of extra edge loops right here. So here's where, where the magic of, um, again, the magic of, of topology comes into play. I'm definitely gonna add one more edge loop right there and another one right here. It doesn't really hurt the, the topology and it allows me in this case, as you can see, to have a really clean, a really clean flow from this point right there. Same for this one right there. The problem is that then we start getting some like wonky looking topologies right here. For instance, this one is a triangle. Triangles are not bad by the way. So I'm gonna keep that triangle right there. However, here we have not a triangle, but rather a, a another like weird sort of effect. And the problem is we do have an extra polygon right there that we need to, to keep into account. So in order for me to solve this, one thing would be to just like combine those two or add another edge loop. I really don't wanna add another edge loop to be honest. So instead, again, since this is a flat place, uh, when you're working with flat planes, you can just like fill it and that's that's pretty much it. So yeah, that looks a little bit ugly right there, but it shouldn't really like create any sort of issues for us. Now I'm gonna go to face mode. I'm gonna grab this, all of the inner faces. So all of this guys, and I'm gonna use a G and a Y to push them forward, to give them the, the thickness that we're looking for. So I would say it's something like that. And there we go. That gives us the, the very, very nice pommel uh, section. I think we can make it a little bit more intense. So we're gonna do G and Y and just a little bit more. There we go. Now that we have this, we need to mirror it. And uh, mirror is where the where the magic happens because that's one of the, the cool things about the 3D world. If you do it right, then you should be able to, to just like mirror everything and you're gonna get the same results. So in this case, this pommel is really interesting or this handguard, sorry, is very interesting because it's symmetrical on the X axis. So from left to right, and it's also symmetrical on the Y axis from front to back. So I'm gonna press control A to apply all transforms first. And once I've done that, I'm gonna add a modifier and it's gonna be a mirror modifier. And by doing this, as you can see, we can successfully mirror this to the other side. However, I see a little bit of an issue right there. And the issue is that on the front view, 
these vertices are not perfectly aligned to the world. Here's how to align them. Very easy. We're going to grab all of the vertices on the center. And again, S in this case is X zero. So they're perfectly flat. And then I'm going to turn on my little uh, magnet over here and use absolute grid snap to grab all of those guys again. There we go. And use a G and X to make sure that they perfectly line up to the center. Once I'm done, I just turn that one off. And now if we turn our mirror back on, you're going to see that the uh, handguard is working perfectly, perfectly fine. One other thing that we can do here is we can also turn on the Y axis at the same time. And look at that. We've immediately get the thickness on both sides of the element. Now here is where we can decide whether or not we want to make this handguard a little bit more uh, thick or not. And it's very easy. We just grab all of this uh, faces that we had right here. And since the mirror is a modifier and it has not been applied to the object, that means that we can uh, do this procedurally. This is one of the things that I really, really like about Blender is as, as long as you're not um, doing this like permanently, you can really, really like play around with this sort of things. So yeah, there we go. So we can make the handguard just a little bit thicker. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Let's bring it back just a tad bit there. And there we go. Once we're happy, like if I'm, I'm really happy with this mirror, and so far I think this looks very nice, I'm going to just click on this little arrow and hit apply. And what that will do is it will, um, it will now make sure to, what's the word? It will now make sure to, to subdivide it. Phantom, good night, my friend. Yes, the video will be up in YouTube. It's not going to be, well, I think it's going to be the, uh, the full stream and also like a speed up version of it. So yeah, everything is going to be in YouTube as well, my friends. You can, I think, I think all of our like uh, links and uh, Discord channel and everything should be like right around the description. Yes, our support will continue. It's now going to be eight Leals art support. Uh, portfolio review will continue. We'll do projects. We'll do tips. We'll do pretty much everything you guys are used to. We'll, we're still going to be doing it. It's just going to be with a slightly different direction. Uh, now we're going to add another subdivision surface here to the element. And let's take a look at the wireframe. Because I'm seeing some really weird things right there. As you can see, there's a couple of like weird points. That means that some vertices might not be uh, like properly connected or something. Oh, there you go. See that? We got like a weird line there on the inside. So we got some weird faces there that we don't need. Let's go to edit mode, select those faces and delete faces. And of course, we're going to have to do that's a non manifold geometry. That's very bad. Very, very, very bad. So we don't want those. That uh, looks a little bit better, but let's see how it looks once we start adding our support edges. So one there, one there, one there. No, there's definitely a weird polygon right there. Okay, let's let's fix that polygon before we uh, before we continue. Let's see. So if we go, let's turn this off. If we go to vertex mode and we grab that vertex and move it around. Uh, 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 that's really weird. Where's the error? I'm not sure where the error is. Yes, as David is mentioning, the uh, portfolio review is already there on the uh, Discord if you guys want to submit. Okay, so something is wrong with this faces right here. And usually when that happens, one of the best things you can do is just like delete the faces. However, we don't want to do this like 12 times or, or four times in this case. So let's delete all of the one side of the element. And then let's go to the top view. Let's delete the other side of the element. There we go. And that way we can solve this part right here. And again, usually it's just like some weird faces. I'm just going to delete them and then just refill them. So everything else seems to be working fine. So maybe it's just a matter of grabbing these two guys and these two guys. And there you go. So now, now it's working. So another thing we can do, by the way, is since we already know that the mirror is going to work, we could work on this subdivision right here. And then once we are happy with the subdivision, we will do the mirror. So let's do one edge right there, one edge right there, 
one edge on this corner, another one right here, one right there, and one right there. So now when we subdivide, you can see that we get this very nice clean shape on the on the element. I'm going to apply the subdivision and I'm going to go into our mirror function and we're going to mirror on the X and on the Y axis. And look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. We are getting a little bit of a, of a point right there, but that's a that's an easy fix. Let's go back just a couple of elements and see what's going on here. Okay, I think it's the subdivision that's like freaking this out. So let's add one subdivision edge right there. And another thing we can do is we can do the mirror before the subdivision. So we'll do the mirror. Let's apply. And then we do the subdivision. There we go. That's a lot better. And we just let's uh, I mean, we can keep it, we can keep it as a subdivision, so that it's not permanent. And if we need to fix it later on, we can fix it. But there we go. As you can see, that's the that's the handguard ready. So now let's go for the blade, because I think the blade is going to be a, a very, very cool thing. We got a G Lian, G G Lian. Welcome, my friend. I wasn't expecting the stream to have um, to have viewers, to be honest, and to have subscriptions. So thank you very much, guys, for the for the support so far. Uh, let's go Shift A and let's go for a plane, a G and Z to push this up, and we're gonna rotate this on X so that's facing us at ninety degrees. There we go. Or you can just write ninety. There we go. And let's scale this down. And one of the things that I want to do here is because we need to start building the blade. As you can see, the blade. Uh, here's a here's a, a very important trick for everyone, my friends. If you see a complex shape and you don't know where to start, right? Like it's very very common to see a complex shape and be like, oh my god, how am I gonna do this? Break it down. Break it down into simple parts and then build that complexity out of those simple parts. So what I see here is that we have this shield and then another like little shield underneath and then this like decoration right here and then we have the blade. So if we build the blade first, then it's going to be a lot easier to be able to create everything else on top of it, okay? So don't see everything as a whole. Try to try to break it down into into parts, okay? So, yeah, let's see. Andy the Leech says um I just joined the Discord very nice. Thanks for the link. You're welcome, guys. And thanks uh to Sarn here who's helping us with all of this all of these things as well. So now we're gonna grab this edge loop right here. And I'm gonna turn on this guy, the little snapping thing, GX, and I'm gonna snap it to the center because we only wanna build the uh, the center of the sword. I'm gonna grab this guy right here, rotate a little bit so that we can get the, the perfect like effect. There we go. And again, keep it simple. We're gonna keep it really, really, really simple. Let's go to wireframe mode. I'm gonna go vertex. Let's grab that one. G, let's go. And then this one right here. We don't need the snap anymore. And um, we're going to start like extruding this thing. So as you can see, this edge right here, very easy extrusion up. And then here's where the where a little bit of the complexity is going to start happening. We have a really good challenge with this sort of like division. We need the blade to go into the pommel, but we also need the blade to go out. So if I were to draw a a like a very, very quick topology, I know that we need this topology right here, right? So this tells me that right here, we're gonna have a, a break on the topology, something like this. And we want a straight line right here, following up. And that way we're gonna be able to capture and make all of these things flow nicely. So this is study that I'm doing right here. This is a technique that I like to share on my on my courses, which as I mentioned, we're, we're coming up with the first course very, very soon. Uh, and the, this is a technique where you draw the topology so that you understand how things should flow to get the perfect uh, distribution. So once that I have that, I can I can keep that by the way, and I can go back to my element right here. And uh, I'm gonna go into vertex mode. Let's grab this one, a G. And as you can see, this tells me that we're gonna need at least like four divisions here. So I'm gonna go with my loop cut. We're gonna have one, two, and three divisions. We're, we're gonna move some of them in, in just a second but I know that this is gonna be like the general direction. So from this guy right here, we're gonna extrude all the way to the top here, 
Let's delete the annotation. I think it's it's making it a little bit difficult to see. There we go. So that's going to be one of them. And then this one's going to be another one right here. Remember to breaches just M and we just merge them at center. G and there we go. Now here we are going to need a couple of lines as well. So with the loop cut, let's do one line right around there and another line right around there. Now we can go back to the vertex and just start pushing this vertex right here. Again, I know that the subdivision modifier is going to smooth all of this curve at down. Oh, thank you, Aryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, it's, it's actually the same light. I just did some uh, <laughs> some interesting tricks to to get it to to get some uh, some extra color, and I changed the the location of the what's the word of the um, of the light bulbs as well. Unfortunately, I don't have a like a super advanced like a streamer setup yet, uh, but this one's uh, this one's doing the tricks for now. There we go. So here's where the where the interesting thing is going to happen. Pay pay clo close attention to this one. I'm going to add a loop cut right here. And then what I want to have is I want to have this edge loop go up and then up over here. So what that will do is now if we move this around, we're going to have this sort of like U shape effect. Okay. That's going to give me the proper um, subdivision that we need for the sort. Let's do one point right there and another point right here. And then this guys, we're just going to merge them together and uh, merge them together. And finally, this guy and this guy, we fail. So as you can see, we've success successfully created this interesting topology. That's going to be the topology that we're going to be using for the construction of the main blade. Let's go back to the wireframe and let's uh, finish this because this one right here needs to go all the way to the top. And then this one right here, I'm going to extrude all the way to the top as well. Let me hide the other ones for now because they're a little bit distracting. So this guys, we're going to merge them at center. Oh, let's just push this one out. There we go. And then this one, you can see it, it also goes on top of the sword, right? So, so I'm expecting to see this guy and this guy go up and then one more right there. And then here again, the topology is going to change because we have this thing. A very common mistake that I see people make is they'll like stretch this out. But if we stretch this out, then the subdivision surface is not going to give us the best result. So in this particular case, it's a lot easier to just like extrude this once right there to generate the, the little like shelf that we would expect to see at that particular point. There we go. Now on this side over here, I'm going to make a little bit of a better distribution with this points. One of the rules for topology when you're doing assets for games is that you want to try to um, to have a uniform distribution. Like you don't want to have too many points close to each other because that like generates a, a slight a slight weird effect. Same thing here, like I'm gonna try to to keep this as sharp as possible following the the line on the sword. All of this, guys, for instance, we can scale on the Z zero. So they're perfectly flat. And now it's going to be a lot easier to extrude them all the way down. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the stream, we were talking about uh, this thing right here and the fact that we need to use this as a guide. So I'm going to push this one back. There we go. So that we can follow roughly the shape of the element. So let's go back to, to the vertex or in this case to the edges. I'm going to grab this whole edge right here. And we're going to extrude all the way down in the C. So all of these lines are going to go pretty much all the way down. And over here, of course, as they keep going down, they're going to be scaled. And that's what's going to give us the sort of like the sharpness of the sword. Right around here, we have a really nice like uh, effect with the sword. So it's a good idea to, to add the loop cut at that uh, distance. And you can see it goes out a little bit. So, so let's push this out. Creates this sort of effect. By the way, guys, if you have questions, feel free to to write there on the chat and um, on the chat, <laughs> on the chat, and uh, I'll be happy to to answer your questions. Chila Keith, what's up, my friend? Long time no see. Long, long time. Okay, cool. Let's um, let's hide this one for a second. 
now that you have a, a good idea of how this sword is looking. So for this sword, the, um, the process is going to be slightly different than what we did for the, um, what's the word, for the handguard. So first, I want to grab all of the edge loops on the side right here, and I'm going to make sure that they're all like perfectly centered. So by grabbing those guys, I'm just going to say scale x0. And then with my, again, my absolute grid snap here, I'm going to G and X to make sure they're perfectly centered. There we go. Now, uh, the interesting thing here is that swords have a, a thickness, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab all of the faces. I'm going to extrude these faces uh, up. Let's get rid of this. So on the Y axis, I'm gonna give this guy a little bit of thickness. If we bring our plane back, especially the hand guard, this should give me a good like indication of how like thin or not this thing should be. However, the interesting thing here is that as you can see, this blade goes around the hand guard and then goes back like together, right? So what I need to do here is uh, first, I need to like, um, or I just need to make sure that this thing follows the proper the proper shade that I want and then I'm gonna have to go back to this side right here and give it some um, some sharpness because it, it doesn't have any sharpness just yet so I'm gonna go to wireframe here I'm gonna grab these two faces I'm gonna push them out on the y-axis so push them out on the y-axis and there we go but I need to be very, very careful in how I do this because it should be a sort of like smooth transition, right? From that point to the next one. Same thing for, for like this edge right here. As you can see, this edge is pushing up a little bit. So I'm gonna do a, a G and a Y to push this up here a little bit. We got a QQ. 1593X, hi Abe, I've attended your ZBrush online class before. It helps me a lot. ZBrush is a little bit expensive to update recently, so I'm turning to Blender. Yes, I've uh, I've been turning to Blender as well, my friend. And yes, unfortunately, ZBrush has made some uh, business decisions that are quite questionable. And uh, if Blender if Blender uses some of the money that it's been got been getting from the from the foundation, I think they can they can become like a really really strong uh, competitor for uh, for ZBrush. So yeah, as you can see here, I'm, I'm pushing a lot of these lines forward to generate the sort of effect that we have on the on the element. I would love to have a side view of the of the weapon to know how how thin or, or thick this these things are supposed to be. But unfortunately, I do not own a PlayStation. <laughs> so I'm not going to be able to to get some captures from that. There we go. So see how we're like very traditionally poly modeling some of these points so that we get the, the effect that we want. That's the that's the trick here. Now for the blade, for the actual blade, which is going to start right around here, I'm going to grab all of these elements right here, which are very few right now. I'm just going to G and Y to push them in. I'm not going to collapse them. I know a lot of people like to collapse the edges, but in this case, I'm not going to collapse them. I'm gonna try to keep them like this. And that's gonna give us the, the sort of like the thickness of the element. Um, the question from Sheila Kid says, so you're no longer using Maya. No, I am still using Maya. I use Maya, Blender, Zebra, Substance, Unreal, Marvelous, Marmoset, um, Substance Sampler, SP3. Like uh, I, I, I've always said this, um, Sheila Kid, and you might remember from, from the classes, you don't or you shouldn't mm, like marry yourself or get married to a, um, to a specific um, software. So Blender has been really, really like a good from, I think, I think it started like in 2.8 where they revamped the whole like interface and stuff. Um, and ever since then, it's been a, a very, very like strong competitor for the, for the 3D world. So, so my advice to, to all my, my friends and my, my uh, artist friends is, is keep an eye on, on Blender because it's, uh, it's, it, it will become industry standard. I'm sure of it. So it's not like Maya is going anywhere. That's another thing that people are kind of like scared of. It's like, oh no, I spent so much time learning Maya. What am I gonna do now? That's not going anywhere, but it, it definitely will be uh, challenged now by, um, by Blender. Let's delete all of these inner faces real quick. So delete all of those faces. 
And I'm also going to delete all of the upper faces, but to do that a little bit faster, I'm just going to go to, to the top view. Just be very careful here not to delete any of this other faces that we need. There we go. So X and delete faces. And now if we add the, the mirror modifier, we should be able to get the full weapon. There we go. So that's mirror on X and on Y. Oh, okay. First things first, we need to uh, control A, control A and apply all transforms. There we go. So we get both sides of the of the sword. And look at that. That looks really, really nice. Now I'm actually not going to apply the the mirror function just yet. Let's apply the subdivision surface to see how this is looking. Okay, not bad, not bad. Now I I think I am going to apply it. So I'm going to apply the the effect. And let's get out of isolation mode. Let's turn on the rest of the elements. And uh, yeah, I, I really like how this is looking. I do feel like this is a little bit thick, like this faces right here. So I'm going to select both of them. And one of the things that we can do is we can turn on like the, uh, what's the word, the uh, proportional editing, it's called. And if I press S and um, S and right click, I can get the proportional editing really, really small. There we go. So I'm going to do S and Y. And as you can see, that allows me to, it's kind of like soft selection instead of Maya. It allows me to adjust things a little bit better. I'm going to do the same thing with this edge loop right here. So S and Y, just to push them a little bit over the element. There we go. That's going to give the sword a lot more, you know, a lot more dimension. Now we need to start thinking about the subdivisions or the, the surfaces. For instance, this face is right here. All of this face is right here. We can G and the Z to bring them down. We don't need proportional editing anymore. So G and Z to bring them down and hide them. We're going to be pretty much hiding them inside the handguard. Again, it's... Uh, it's kind of like implied that um, that this thing would go into the handle of the of the actual sword, and that's what's going to give us a, a very nice effect right there. Cool. So that's that's looking better. I kind of like it. I think we're in a good position. Now let's start adding some support edges, and to do that, I definitely need to bring in my subdivision surface, and especially like this point right here, like right. Like uh, we definitely need to make sure that this like uh. Uh, sharp part of the sword is, is very, very sharp. So I'm going to use my loop cut. I'm going to add a loop cut right there and another one right there. And as you can see, that's already like giving me that sort of effect. Another thing that I'm seeing is that the center line of the sword is also like pointing up. So let's turn off this thing for just a second. And I'm going to go to edge mode. Edge mode. And we're going to grab the edges here for the sword. Now it's a good time to open the, the pure ref file because I'm going to be like referencing um, different parts of the element. Uh, there we go. So if we see the sword, yeah, it has like a very strong sort of like diamond shape going all the way through its length. So I'm going to move this to the side real quick. There we go. And uh, yeah, that pretty much tells me that I need to grab this guys right here. And the same lines on the back. And scale on Y. Here's where proportional editing could come into play again, to make sure that we get a a nice like flow. That's way, way too much. I'm trying to think what's the best option here. Let's go back a little bit. I think thinking not it might not be a bad idea to to delete some of the halves of the element for now so that we can focus on this thing a little bit better. 
but I'm just, I'm just gonna try to to work with this. Let me delete. I'm gonna delete all of these faces on the bottom part for now. So all of these faces. Let's go. That way we can focus on the thickness first, and then when we extrude down, we're gonna have the um, the proper direction that we want. Okay, so this tells me that this edge right here. Let's let's also I'm gonna eliminate this ones for just a second. We'll we'll break them back, but it's a lot easier to work with low uh, elements first, and then jump into the into the high polys. So this one, I'm going to add G and Z, or sorry, G and Y, push them up. As you can see, that's giving us a little bit of a better result right there already. Another thing we could do is we could collapse some edges. I'm thinking about doing that. Let's turn off this thing. G and Y, or scale and Y. I think collapsing some edges might not be a bad idea. I'm going to collapse this and this one right here. So M to collapse. Because you can see we are getting the proper like curvature on the front, but not on the back. This is another moment where it might not be a bad idea to, again, delete the back of the element. So let's go to face mode. so that we can uh, do another mirror later on. There we go. That way, if we're only like worried or if we're only working with this part right here, it's gonna be a lot easier to, to get the sort of like effect that we want to, to get. Let's go to vertex mode. And again, just to, to keep it simple. I know this looks like a lot of backtracking, but um, that's the way we normally do it as well in in production pipelines. We just like whatever you need to do. If it's easier to solve it this way, it doesn't matter. So now that we have this, I can bring this vertex down so we can get the, the nice sharp effect. And we can start playing with some of this guys to generate like the like the proper curvature that we have on the concept. So very, very nice control here. Just trying to to capture the, the elements that we have right here. What are my favorite add-ons for Blender? That's a great question. So I don't use add-ons as much. Um, I try to keep it stuck because when I teach, I know not every student will have access to the to all of the add-ons. So I don't use like as many add-ons as other people. However, I like using the Substance add-on, of course, for Substance Painter. I like using um, uh, the screen cap or the screencast for the for the keys right here. There's one for retopology that I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of. It's called uh, Retopoflow. Super, super cool add-on. And the, I, I, I've heard that some of the modeling add-ons are really good as well. I haven't really used them as much. But I know there's some like ninja, ninja like modeling things. Since I'm, I'm like traditionally trained, if you could say that. Um, again, I, I don't use as many add-ons. The problem with add-ons is if you're doing indie stuff or if you're doing your own stuff, then it's fine. Like you, you don't have to worry about anything. But if you're working on a studio, there's a lot of studios that won't buy add-ons or license for the add-ons because it's, uh, it's a lot more expensive. And uh, when that happens, you need to work with like the stock thing. That's why when I, uh, in Maya, for instance, I, I don't use uh, as many add-ons either because um, I was taught that, uh, especially like, let's say you you go and work for Disney, right? And there's an add-on that you always use, but Disney doesn't want to have any like uh, liability or anything, then you don't use it. Like you, you just can't use it, which is quite uh, unfortunate because there are some very powerful add-ons, but at the same time, it's, uh, I, I kind of understand why they, why they do that. I'm gonna grab now all of these edges 
again. And we're going to extrude them, scale them on Z0, C0, there we go. And if we bring back the image, we should be able to find oh, where they end. However, here we're going to have to do something really interesting because there is a specific topology that we want to, to get. So uh, for the topology, what we want is we want this point right here. Let's start like collapsing this guys a little bit more because we want the border, which is a sharp edge to pretty much touch the, the corner right there. This is a, one of the problems with uh, with swords. The topology becomes really, really finicky at the very end. So we're going to keep it like that for now. Just want to make sure that I'm capturing this part properly. Buenas, el Mr. Señor Don Tacos. How are you, my friend? Welcome. Let's add one line right there, one out right there, one line right there, one line right there. Because when you, what you can see here that's also happening is that we need to modify some of these elements. Am I going to do animation as well? Animation courses, you mean? Or if am I going to animate this sword? Because animation courses, uh, no. Uh, well, actually, animation courses, yes, maybe. Animating this sword right here? No, I don't think so. Because we'll need to do character animation, and that's a, that's a whole different story. There we go. So this is looking quite nice. We're getting a nice sort of like flow overall. Uh, let's turn on subdivision and see how this is subdividing. Ugh. Uh, 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 uh. I mean, the blade is fine, but you can see that we have an issue with the, with the forward facing elements. So we're going to have to use a mirror to solve that. Let's do, let's do a mirror function. And we're going to do this on the Y axis on the back. There we go. So as you can see that the, the main blade or the main like sharpness of the sword is, is being like respected quite nicely. But if we take a look at the front right here, we're not really getting what we want. So the first thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to collapse all of this guys into a single point. And then I'm going to collapse this one as well into a single point. There we go. So that when we see that from the side, we can really push this to be like the sharpness of the sword. And then what we need to do is we need to grab this guys right here and scale them in Y. So we start building the sort of like pointy edge of the of the sword. So same thing here, scale on Y and push them. Not too much, right? Like it's a Supposed to be a balance. Get on Y. And push in. There we go. So that way, as the sword keeps going forward, we start getting it. It becomes thinner and thinner, right? So... So that's, I think, the, the high point right there. And again, if we see this sort of like diamond shape, there we go. That looks that looks quite nice. Because that's the point, this point right here, that's the point where we have one of the marks. So I know that that one needs to be pushed a little bit more. Let's push this one a little bit more.
this one as well. Scale and Y. If you have more questions, guys, this is the time. Because this is the, the finicky part of the of the process, and I'm just trying to make this as fast as possible and as like complete as possible. Okay, so let's see how this looks. If we there we go. Now that's what I'm talking about. Cool. So yeah, as you can see, this is looking way, way, way better. The only thing we need to do here is we need to grab this edge loops right here, scale them on X zero, and then move them to the very center right there. There might be some points as well, like this one. There we go. There we go. There we go. So all of the ones that are not in the X axis, we just snap them to the X axis. And that should complete our sort. Okay, so that's looking way, way, way better than what we had before. Let's apply the mirror. Because I want to be able to see all of the elements. And now, for instance, I can definitely see that the curvature here is not perfect. So let's push the curvature out a little bit. And this is going to give us a way, way nicer effect on the sword. Now, after all of this, we can go and add our support edges. So I'm going to add a support edge right there and another one right here. I'm going to turn on symmetry so that we can do this on both sides. But first, I think I need to apply this. Let's see if it works now. Uh... No, it's not working for whatever reason. That's fine. Let's do uh, let's do one line right there on the very border. Another one right here. We're gonna do one right there, one right here, one on the inside, one on the outside, one right down the middle, another one right down the middle, and then we need one right there, and another one right there. And as you can see, that's giving us the sort of like sharp look that we're that we're going for. What do you think so far? Looking good? Do you like it? I think this is looking nice. Let's do one up here. One up here. One down here. One down here. One up here. One up here. So all of these are just support edges that we need to to make sure that the weapon gets the sort of like effect that we want. Look at that. Yeah, not bad. I think the handguard might be a little bit too thick. So I'm going to scale this on Y a little bit in. So there's not a lot of overlap. We could also scale this on Y a little bit more. But this is looking very, very cool. Look at that. We get the very nice pointy edge on the back or in the bottom. And a very, very strong sword. There's a little bit of a weird bulge right there in the middle. You can see the, the bulge right there. I think I want to fix that one a little bit. Let's see. We got a question from Andy. It says, how will the art support work? Will it be on Discord or will it be like before in a Google Doc that will eventually become a YouTube video? That's a great question. I think Discord is better. I, I, I don't want to use Google Drive anymore because I, I felt like a lot of people were having issues uh, submitting their stuff. So I think we're going to be doing um, a Google Drive folder. What do you think, Sarn? Should we add another another like art support, uh, like the art support nexus that we have? I think that's a good idea. Let's go W and let's fix this bulge a little bit. So for instance, this one, I'm just gonna Z on Y. And just put a little bit with the scale right there. There we go. Yeah, so we're gonna have a Discord channel. We'll, we'll work on it this uh, this week, my friend, so that we can um, 
so that we can have the support nexus. The support nexus, for those of you that are not aware of what it was, uh, it was a way in which you could submit a file. So in this case, if you were, I don't know, like practicing a face and you were having issues with the face and you didn't know how to how to approach it, you could use the art support nexus to uh, to share that and um, and I would open the file and just work on it. Now this, uh, one thing that I, I really wanna add here, cause we really have the nice like sharp effect right here, but we're missing it on this side right here. So I'm gonna grab this edge right here. I'm gonna scale it on Z again. Scale on, sorry, on Y. And that should like give me the, the effect, there we go. So now we have the nice little like bump right there that makes it seem like a, like a diamond shape. Cool. Now, you guys know what I haven't done yet? I haven't saved. We've been working this for so, like what, like an hour and a little bit, and, uh, and I haven't saved. So let's save, because I don't want any bad thing to happen. There we go, let's, another thing that I wanna do here is maybe like bevel that edge. I think, I think we can get like an even stronger distribution or a stronger, a stronger effect. If we bevel, mm, starts looking a little bit weird though. I mean, it's fine. The only thing, because I, I, I do like the sort of like strong effect that we get there. The only thing that this is uh, like generating is, as you can see, the the loop right here. It's not as smooth. So I'm gonna GNC. Let's get rid of this guy. A GNC to smooth this out on both sides, and that should give us a a stronger effect without that much of an issue. Still not ideal though. I don't know what else could we do. Let's add one more edge loop right there in the center. That's a little bit better. Still feels a little bit weird. It's a little bit better. Let me play my song. Why is my song not playing? Oh, it seems like I got locked out or something. Huh, weird. Anyway, so yeah, let's go back. No, I definitely need music. <laughs> I'm gonna go into the chill zone on our channel. We have a chill zone on the channel, by the way, if you guys are not aware, we got a chill zone and you can go in there. And we have some very cool music. That's just uh, like lo-fi stuff, but it's very, very cool. There we go. Okay, so I think I think we're in a good position for the blade. Let's uh, let's start working on the on the remaining details. So one of the details that we have here on the top is the little shield, right? Let's we don't need this anymore. So one of the things I'm going to do is let's do some very quick cleanup. Let's call this a blade. Let's call this handguard. Let's call this pommel base. Let's call this like handle. So I'm gonna grab all of the elements except for the image plane. I'm gonna press M to create a new collection and this is gonna be called Invictus, which is the name of the sword. Hit okay and turn it off. By the way, has anyone played the, um, what's the word? Has anyone played the, the or like the Final Fantasy 16 game? So I've been, I've been trying to, to get my hands on it, but uh, as I mentioned, I don't have a, <laughs> I don't have a, a PlayStation 5, so. I'm gonna have to save for one of those. Okay, so the next shape or the next thing that I'm seeing here is this like very, very interesting um, like plate that goes on top of the blade. And it adds this very, very nice detail to, to the whole thing. Now, we do need the blade to get an idea of where that thing is gonna be, which is this piece right here. And uh, Technically, we could use the blade to extract some of the information, but it has a little bit more of a complex shape. So I'm not I'm not gonna do that, uh, to be honest. Oh, you really think it's gonna be game of the year? I, I, I'm really I, I think um, Zelda is is just so strong every time. I find it difficult for anyone any game to compete against it, to be honest. Let's see. There we go. So we're gonna start with a very, very small square here, right there. And what we need to do is we need to create a, this whole like shape right here. So it's again, it's another like topology, uh, topology um, thing. So we're gonna start in edge mode. 
Extruth. 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 Now, these are very like 90 degree elements, so I'm going to keep them 90 degrees, but that doesn't mean that every part is going to be a 90 degree angle. There will be some elements like this curve that we're about to enter over here, where we definitely want to have uh, something a little bit more interesting. So from here, extruth right there. And then this edge extrude all the way down. G. And I do think we can add like one actual right there. Let's start with one later on. If we need, if we need another one, we'll, we'll add it. But right now that one, that one's more than enough. Now, as you can see, it's uh it's going to be an interesting uh, challenge for this one because we do need to follow the same sort of like flow that the sword has uh, here. Let's extrude, grab these two guys, or mesh to center. There we go. Grab this guy, extrude. Right there. I do think a new edge loop right there is, is, is worth it because we can move this one. And then all of this is, is fairly simple, right? So all of this, we just, oh, just go all the way to the top in the same way as what we did with the original uh, like blade. Here, we just grab this one and create the edge loop right there. So it's just like a like an extra plate that goes on top, right? That's, that's pretty much it. Vanilla Head, keep up the good work. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, thank you for the support. I'm happy to be doing this. Let's extrude this. I would say right around there because we have the, the little shield then. From here to here, we just fill. Go. And now this is where, again, we need a, a clean loop. So, Gonna be something like that. Let's delete this face. Feel. And here, here's the the interesting uh, switch. We go from this one. You move it a little bit. See that? It's a very very common trick. We just like skew it a little bit to the side, and when we do that, uh, we're gonna be able to just grab this edge. Extrude it there, and as you can see, we create an edge loop that's going to flow in the direction of this uh, weapon right there. So that way we don't add any extra lines. So for instance, this two guys, we can definitely like collapse. Just keep a triangle right there. Triangles are not bad. It's a very, very common misconception in the 3D world. The triangles are, are bad. They're not bad. They're just like a double-edged sword, <laughs> literally like the sword that we're doing. And uh, the problem is a lot of people don't know how to properly use them. So... If they, if you don't know how to properly use them, it's very probable that you're gonna like mess it up, and the, and that's when when triangles become like problematic. There we go. So we got the shape ready. So now let's go to solid mode. I'm gonna push the push this a G, push it forward or a G Y, push it forward a little bit. And the challenge here, as you can see, is that we need to push all of these points, all of the elements. So they're flat against the, uh, the the rest of the object. So let's go to wireframe mode. I'm gonna grab, for instance, this guys G, G and Y. Let's push them out. There we go. Now we can do a little bit of overlap here. That's fine. So for instance, here a G and Y as well. Because we're going to be extruding this guy in just a second. So, so when we extrude, we're going to have thickness. And that means that we're going to be able to solve a little bit of the issues that we're getting here. So I'm going to keep a little bit of overlap. I know it looks really weird right now, but um, just trust me, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work. Let's do one more there and one more there. So that we can grab this face, push it in, and then this edge, push it in as well. Let's 
Let's go wireframe mode. So for instance, this line right there, that's the one that's right on top of the of the curvature. This whole face. Right there. Again, a little bit of overlap. It's actually going to be good for us. But the edges, we do need to push them out. Another thing that's now that I think of it, that that might have been the, the best um, thing that we could have done from the beginning was to use uh, this guy as a uh, snapping option and uh, and just project the, the points. Can we do that now? I think we can do it. I'm going to use a uh, face project on this guy. And we're going to do um, closest. And now I think if we go to this guy right here, and for instance, we grab this point, we can a G and a Y. Let's turn it on. G and Y. G and Y. And as you can see, it should, there you go. It should snap, as you can see, to the front part. So. So yeah, that seems to be working. So again, G and Y. G and Y. G and Y. As you can see, we're snapping all of the points to the center. G, Y, G, Y. See how all of them are jumping to the, to the base of the element? Can we do multiple? Yes, it appears that we can. There we go. That's going to make our whole lives a lot easier. So we're literally just projecting these guys to the front. So they're actually touching the closest point of the surface while still retaining all of the elements that we have. Missing any point, this one. Yeah, that seems to be a good distribution. There we go. See how we're getting that very weird overlap? That's actually what we want. That's what we want. JJ Leanne, thanks for the stream, Saren. Uh, that's fine, my friend. See you back on the next one. Thank you for, for being here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is I am going to go into object mode, face mode, grab all of them. We don't need this anymore, and we're just going to extrude forward. We're going to get this, which is like the detail that we wanted to get in the first place, right? Like the sort of uh, like nice um, extra element on top of the whole thing. On this top part, though, this thing should should go be going to this part. So I'm going to grab uh, this face right here and this one right here. And I'm going to extrude a little bit and then grab these two faces and extrude on the Y axis. I'm going to scale Y zero to make sure that they're perfectly flat. And then from the top view, I'm going to turn on this is snapping now to increment absolute grid snap, a G Y. So they're perfectly there. And when the, we delete those faces, because we're going to be uh, mirroring this to the other side, right? So, so we needed to do that. This edge, we can, oh, let's turn this off. This edge, we can a G and Z to push it up a little bit. So it's not like super, super flat. There we go. Let's isolate this for just a second. This faces we're also going to delete because we're going to be mirroring, mirroring this to the front. We're going to grab all of the vertices here on the side, scale X zero, and then a G X. So they're perfectly aligned. Perfect. And there we go. So as you can see, we've successfully created the um, this little like extra like metal band that goes on top of everything. Bastion is saying, sorry, I just joined, but may I ask why you choose Blender for this asset instead of Maya? Uh, yes, I've been using Blender quite a bit for the past couple of weeks. And uh, the thing is, even though I love using Maya, there are a lot of people out there that 
can't afford or don't have access to Maya and everyone has access to Blender, right? So from um, from an audience perspective, we're also seeing that there's a lot of people that use uh, Blender and uh, we're going to be using both. So so don't think that we're not going to use Maya anymore. But I, I am of the thought that you can pretty much get the same result independently of uh, which software you're using as long as you follow all of the, the rules that we know about 3D. Look at this. Not bad. Not freaking bad. Look at that. Holding the sword very, very nicely there. I'm going to shade smooth. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add some support edges. Uh, there's a little bit of a weird mirror right there. Okay, it's coming from this side right here. What the hell is this vertex? Uh, it's a weird face. Okay, let's go face mode and delete that face. Okay, so before we do the mirror, or actually, I mean, we, we know the mirror is going to work. It's, it's working perfectly fine right here. But while that thing is working, I do want to add some loop cuts to make this a little bit hard, uh, more hard surfacey. So I'm going to add one right there and one right here. And that should give us a, a more hard surfacey look. There we go. Let's hit apply on the on this whole thing. And I'm a little bit scared of the subdivision surface because yes, we're gonna lose a lot of the details you can see right there. Uh, but we can get it back. So before we do that, I'm just gonna start adding some support edges here. So for instance, there, 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 there 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 yes yes that that was my yeah no and and there are tools here instead of blender w uh, where we could have uh, done that a little bit easier as well um but since i'm trying to kind of like speed run this uh, this modeling i um i'm not using them right now that's just a subdivision surface there we go that's that's looking okay The problem with this is that we are getting some like weird pinches here and there. You can see those like all around the element. And that's unfortunate due to the due to the way this um due to the way the topology is built. We're getting a lot of pinches. But we're also No, Chi like it it doesn't matter if, if objects are, are overlapping on a game. Like that's that's perfectly fine. Unless, unless they're gonna be uh, animated. If they're gonna be animated, then yes, you you should try to to keep them as clean as possible. Okay, so the the thing with this one right here, my friends, as you can see, is that uh, we do have a, a very nice like overlapping piece, but there's a lot of like uh, pinches, and I hate those pinches. So I'm gonna do something a little bit unorthodox with this uh, with this thing right here, and that is I'm gonna apply the mirror, and then I'm gonna apply the subdivision. And then I'm actually going to jump into sculpting. So we're going to go into sculpting for that particular piece. And what we can do is we can actually turn on remeshing, which is kind of like Dynamesh, at a really low subdivision, like that. And if we remesh, hopefully this doesn't crash. There we go. If we remesh, as you can see, we're going to get this sort of result. But now I can actually turn on X and Y symmetry and we can smooth all of that out. So we're going to be able to have pretty much our same sort of uh, element, but with with a nicer result. Let me turn on statistics because I'm not sure. Oh my God, 3 million polygons. Yeah, that's a little bit too much. We'll simplify that. Don't worry. Let's see how, how we can pretty much clean all of this like edges very, very nicely. So sculpting is not a bad idea to to use in this particular asset. And it might even give us a sort of like hammered metal effect or something. But three million polygons is definitely definitely on the on the heavy side of things. Let's go back to uh, layout mode. Let me say real quick. And now let's focus on the, well, actually, let me, let me decimate it. I'm not sure if I want to decimate. Yeah, 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 there was, there was some luck. Sorry about that. It's uh, when the CPU gets, uh, gets active, uh, the encoding and the stream have a little bit of an issue. I'm going to scale this on Y. 
just a bit. There we go. Now let's work on the well. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna decimate this later because if I try to do it now, I'm scared that the that the stream will crash. So let's work on the uh, little shield now. Okay, let's hide this for now. This piece. Let's also get it in there. There we go. So the shield, as you can see, is made out of two parts. Let's do the first part first, the, the bottom part first, so that I can explain how this works. And then we'll do the, the next part. Now, the one thing I'm not super fond of is the fact that this also seems to be like molded against the sword. Is that the case? No, that's a little bit more straight. Okay, okay, that's that's cool. So, so the shield, as you can see, it's a little bit more straight. It's it's a little bit further up. So, so it's not really like there. There's a little bit of a bend, but it's not as as heavy. So, so yeah. So then the process is gonna be fairly fairly simple. I'm just gonna press uh, Shift A, mesh plane, bring the plane up, rotate on the X axis 90 degrees, scale it down, hit G, scale it down. G. You're also gonna have to forgive me, guys. This is the uh, the first stream we're doing here, so I'm still a little bit nervous as well. Uh, let's go to to wireframe, and uh, oh, uh oh, this could potentially crash. on here where's the plane huh. there's a plane there we go sorry okay so yeah now let's just uh, go over here yeah this is going to be the border of our element we're going to go into edit mode and we're gonna grab this edge and we're gonna extrude down to create the, the curvature there on the shield. And then we're gonna extrude down again to go towards the point. We're gonna go to vertex mode and we're gonna push this up. There we go. And let's give this a little bit more space. So as you can see, that one pretty much ends right there at the border of the handguard. And we're gonna add one and two right there. We're gonna grab this one go right there this one goes right there and we're actually going to use i'm going to use this elements that i have right now to create the little like border that you see right there let's just scale x zero there we go turn this off very quickly just to make sure that it's perfectly snapped and over here we're also going to add just two more divisions we don't need this one anymore So as you can see, this creates a, a nice little like border around the whole shield. And there we go. Gonna grab this one, extrude this in, scale X zero, turn this on, there we go. And now we need to fill everything in again. So again, very, very similar process to what we've done before. We got one, two, so the easiest way is to just go from this edge to this edge and fill, from this edge to this edge and fill, and then just add a couple of edge loops, let's say one, two, and three. And as you can see, all of this topology just flows by itself. Like we don't even need to do anything. Everything just like works very, very nicely here. That's it. So this whole thing, let's uh, add a mirror modifier first. Uh, let's, of course, apply transforms. There we go. Let's apply the mirror. And then this whole thing um, in phase mode, I'm going to extrude it forward. A little bit. A little bit less something like that and then the whole edge loop that we have that that edge face we're going to extrude and on the extrude i am going to give it a little bit of um actually that's fine 
I was gonna give it a little bit of offset, but I'm sure that when we add the subdivision surface, yeah, there you go. That's gonna like smooth it out for me. I am gonna add one loop cut right here, one right here, and one right here, and one up here. And as you can see, that's gonna give us the very nice like shield effect. If we want to like sharpen this point as well, we can add one right there and one right there. And since it's a flat surface, whenever we're working with flat surfaces, it, it tends to be quite easy, to be honest, uh, because we don't have to to worry too much about like uh, bad parts. So let's a G and Y, push this forward. And this one, we're gonna rotate on the X axis. Well, first we need to go object, set origin, origin to mass or center of volume. So we can rotate on X right there and have this rest. Let's go to the side view and rest right there. Technically we could bend it, but I'm not sure if I want to bend it. I kind of like how it looks like this. What do you guys think? Should we bend it or, or is that fine? Oh, that would be very cool. We're just missing one viewer and we'll get it will be getting to 20 viewers. Not bad for a first stream for someone that's pretty much unknown for now here in Twitch. I'll just keep it like that. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to push it down a little bit more. There we go. Rotation on X a little bit more. Just push it forward so there's as little overlap as possible. There we go. That looks good. And then this guy right here, the only thing we need to do is we need to um, do another mirror. So we're going to do a mirror. But in this case, we cannot just do a mirror on Y because the element is not exactly where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to press Shift A <clears throat> and create an empty plane axis. And I'm going to use that plane axis as the origin point for the mirror. So as you can see, since that axis is on the, on the center of the world, now this is properly going to mirror this to the, to the other side. So yeah, there we go. Now we're going to go to the final part. The final part is going to be... It's going to be the little shield. And after that, um, it's just the booleans for this guy. And uh, we're pretty much done. I do want to do a quick render. I, I, I thought we were going to have time to do the textures, but I don't think we're going to have time to do it. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we can't do a quite nice render for this, like a clay render. Yeah, some of the shapes turn out to be a little bit more complex than I thought. So let's go to... Um, to the front view let's turn this off for just a second and even this one let's turn it off there's a question from bastion that says how customizable is blender's ui like is it possible to somewhat easily create a custom ui for blender that's more like maya uh i'm not sure how easy it would be to be honest i mean there's a lot of things that you can do for instance you can do vertical split and have multiple cameras which is very cool uh there's workspaces so uh, over here right now like this is i i personally do like about uh i personally do like this about blender which is that if you're sculpting you go to the sculpting tab if you're texturing you go to the texture tab if you're rendering you go to the rendering tab geometry notes like depending on, on what part of the process you're working with you can go to to different parts of the um of the software um, again, I find that to be quite quite nice, quite interesting. Some people might not like that. One thing I do miss about Maya are buttons. <laughs> I love having my tools in buttons. Blender is more about like shortcuts, so you're expected to to learn all of the shortcuts or most of the shortcuts, so that you can work a little bit uh, faster. So yeah, it's um, again, it's um, it has its pros and cons, of course, as as, as with everything. Okay, so let's focus on this shield now. I'm gonna again go Shift A and create a mesh plane. Bring the plane all the way to the top. Rotate X 90 degrees so it's facing me. And we're gonna start with topology. Now this one's way more complex. Like I can immediately see how complex this is. So I think I'm gonna be using the, the vertex trick that I showed you earlier to just create like the main loop because this is definitely, definitely a, a, tricky, um, a tricky topology. So let's go to vertex mode. 
let's create like the first like the first element right there there we go and now i am gonna grab this one i'm just gonna extrude so we extrude one extrude twice that seems like an extra detail to be honest like it doesn't seem part of the shield so i'm not gonna do it as part of the shield So as you can see, I'm just like tracing around this like emblem. Again, keep it simple where you can. So then do, wait a second. I just, oh, I just messed up there. Let's see here, 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 here 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 and then here there we go and then we're gonna go up and pretty much we're gonna do the exact same thing but we're gonna go back so for instance right there you can start filling things there we go and then um usually when whenever i'm working with this like complicated elements i like to grab the center edge and just extrude it all the way to the top because i know that we're going to have a symmetry line right so it makes for an, an easier like uh understanding of the of the shape let's merge those to center merge those to center and that way we can start building the the rest of the topology a little bit easier Bastion says, yeah, there's one thing I don't like about Blender when I try to learn it. I like my buttons and honestly, I'm faster using them. I find that I have to dance my hand around the keyboard in Blender. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a matter of uh, getting used to it. Again, I, I've been doing this for for a couple of... Uh, well, I, I started learning Blender like two years ago after using Maya for for 12 years. And, um, and I can't say that I like like one more than the other. I, I understand how each one has its like advantages. So that's why I'm, I was saying uh, earlier on the stream, like if you know both, the cool thing is you can just switch between them, right? Like no one's, there's no, no like software police that's going to be like, oh, you're unloyal to Blender. Therefore, you can no longer use it like that. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so if that's not going to happen, then you shouldn't really need to worry about, um, about using both uh, elements if you, if you feel comfortable with them. Okay. Oh. Fill, 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 fill. That fill. I'm trying to to keep the edge loop going around because eventually I want that edge loop to to just extrude it and create a little border, like the the nice little effect. So so that's why certain things are looking a little bit like complex in this area, but it's for the it's for the good of the topology. Go. There we go. Oh, so close to 20. So close. Call your friends, guys. Tell them, hey, let's have this dude get to 20. Before the stream ends. There we go. Okay, so here, for instance, this point, it's no longer going to flow into this guy. It's going to flow to the side. So I'm just going to extrude here. And then with loop cut. There we go. We're loop cut. We're going we're gonna to fill that area. it for instance here we are gonna do another loop cut here here and here and we're gonna go from here to here here to here let's do one more loop cut there here to here and here to here 
I'm your Paul says hi first time watching one of your streams and it's very helpful for understand these processes there you go welcome I'm your pal a al <laughs> nice I like your name and yeah welcome to the stream my friend uh, Bastian says, I did think about trying Blender for EV renders back in the day, but then my Arnold released GPU rendering. The universe is insisting I stick to Maya. I've been using, I've been using, uh, I, I don't like EV, to be honest. I don't like EV instead of Blender. I've tried using it and I've seen some tutorials and there's people that are, are doing really, really cool stuff with it, but I just can't find like, like it, it doesn't click to me, to be honest. Uh, like if I want to do real time renderings, I prefer to use Marmoset or like Unreal. And if I want to do like cool renders uh, or like traditional renders, I prefer Arnold or uh, Cycles. Cycles is, is Cycles is really strong actually. I, I found that uh, Cycles is very what's the word? It's very powerful in regards to like the denoising things. I actually think that Cycles is better at denoising than um, than Arnold. Because one thing that I don't like about Arnold is that if you don't use high samples when you do videos or animations, um, you get a lot of like flickering in your in your renders. And I've uh, done the exact same thing here in Cycles, and I don't get it. So, uh, like, I don't get flickering. <laughs> Not that I don't get Cycles. I don't get flickering, and that's uh, that's really really cool. Okay, here's where where things are gonna get a little bit tricky. So let's see, let's see how we can do this. We're gonna go up here. Well, first, let, first, let's solve this issue right here. So I think, ideally, we're just gonna merge these two guys. To be honest, yes, it's gonna give us a very weird like loop right there, but it's it's just gonna make things easier. Let's extrude here, and then let's extrude towards the center. those two and we fill this right here there we go let's have another dash. by the way guys if you are new to the stream if you're new to my my content i am just like launching this new brand i was um somewhere else before doing this switch and uh but now we're going to be posting in the youtube uh, twitch we got our discord channel so all of the information should be around uh, the bio section here in the on the account and uh, yeah, feel free to to join all of our socials. Bastian says, "Hmm, interesting. May have may have to have a look. It's more to be recorded, you know." Uh, when I was at school, this was back in 2013. Um, we used B-Ray because it was like the best option uh, back then. Nowadays, I would say that for like our like like indie level stuff it doesn't really matter like all of the renders are going to give you the exact same thing uh renderman is one that a lot of people have been like asking me to to cover renderman is really good i actually used it quite a bit when i first started my studio back in that was 2016 2016 and um and it's good renderman is really really good that's another software. But the thing is, again, most of the stuff that we do, since it's not production, unless you're doing like a full like animation film or something, as long as you can get clean renders, it doesn't really matter where you're where, where you're getting them from. There we go. So we got this guy ready. So I'm just gonna grab this guy, add a modifier. Let's do a mirror modifier. Let's of course apply all transforms. And that's it. You got the little shield ready. Let's apply this. Grab all the faces, extrude, GUI, push them up. And then, this is why we did this proper topology. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. So we just extrude this and get this out. And when we apply the subdivision surface, as you can see, we're going to get the, the sort of effect that we want. Of course, we can uh, add some edge loops, support edge loops, to make this a little bit stronger. Oh, wait a second. I messed up. Did I mess up the edge flow? I think I messed up the edge flow. Okay, so let's fix this. <laughs> I, I made a, a slight mistake here on the, on the edge flow. So let's go faces. Let's delete this face and uh, this face. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that this thing flows into this guy right here. So. It's just a matter of 
extruding this, and then filling that. There we go. Now we just merge those vertices together, and we fill this back in. Perfect. So now again, we control A, file transforms, modifier, mirror modifier, apply, grab all the faces, extrude like that, and then grab all of these faces, extrude like that. So now when we add the subdivision, 20 viewers, we got to 20 viewers. There we go. There we go. Thank you, guys. We're almost at the end of the stream as well. And we got to 20 viewers. Wow. It's pretty cool. I, I got to admit, I was really, really um, like hesitant about um, about this whole situation. But uh, you guys have been giving me a lot of support throughout this past couple of weeks. It's literally been a week since we started this uh, like transition into this new brand. So again, thank you. Thank you to all of the OGs that are, are here supporting the the content. I, I really, really, really appreciate it. It means a lot. Changes is always scary. Again, I, I wish the, the video that I uploaded was not removed, but uh, I, I understand. So uh, on the video, one of the things that I mentioned was that, that the changes is always scary. But uh, one of the things that we need to, to always try to have in mind is that it's part of life, right? So so we always we should always be looking for for new ways to, to improve and to and to share what we what we know. There's a really weird shading right there. And the reason why there's a really weird shading right there is because the topology is really really bad. Let me try adding one right there. Does that work? Uh, 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 um. There we go. That's a little bit better. Cool. Uh, Momo says, yes, congratulations and hoping for a lot of success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Momo. Sarn TB, I'm your pal. Thank you, my friends. Don't worry, Chilla Keith. Um, we're, we're almost there, but the, this thing is going to be available in YouTube very, very soon as well. So make sure to subscribe there if you want to wanna see the final result. I think I'm going to be uploading it for tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. And we're also going to have a, a speed up version. There we go. Let's change the object, uh, set origin, origin to center of mass. So we can rotate this. Oh, that's a tricky one as well. It's a tricky orientation. I think this one's supposed to be a lot flatter. Something like that. It's kind of weird. I, I'm guessing that's why there's this like extra little piece right there. Unless the hand guard. Yeah, that actually makes sense. The hand guard is a lot thicker on the inside here. So I'm going to go wireframe. Now let's use a little bit of uh, transform here. And we're going to scale on Y. So this makes a little bit more sense now. Yeah, there you go. So the handguard becomes uh, thicker so that it can actually support both little plates on the on the sword. That makes more sense from a design perspective as well. So then that means that this one like this. There's gonna be like an empty space right there. I don't, I don't mind it. it kind of looks neat. And let's do a uh, well. Let's apply all transforms. And let's do a mirror. 
we're going to be using in the empty again as a point and we're going to do it on the y-axis so that we have it on the back as well there we go yeah that's a uh, that's almost it almost it the last thing that we need to do is we need to do a couple of booleans and this red shapes right there i think for those red shapes this one does seem to be like bended a little bit but i don't think we're going to be able to cover that now or for this for this uh for this session we'll have to do it on another time so here um for the booleans let's do the booleans because i think those are, are actually quite quite nice and relatively simple so i'm going to press shift a and i'm going to uh, create a cube and we're going to scale the cube let's go to the wireframe get the cube in there and scale on the y or on, on z to get the first shape that's going to be the first shape shift d scale on c as well and as you can see the vertex are a little bit um different so this one let's get rid of this one this one goes there and this one goes there even this one also has a slight like angle to it they are a little bit bevel so i'm gonna grab both of these guys i'm gonna say Control j to combine them and then I'm going to add a modifier. It's going to be a bevel modifier. I'm going to add two segments and a slightly bigger fraction. So they're a little bit softer. I'm going to apply this. I'm going to add a subdivision modifier, subdivision surface. There we go. And a smooth. And I'm also going to apply the subdivision so that the Boolean becomes a little bit better. Now let's bring everything back. And one of the important things is I need to make sure that these guys are properly positioned in such a way that they're going to create the sort of effect that I want. So I'm going to go to wireframe. Let's move them a little bit, rotate. Let's grab all of this, move them, oh, rotate. Right. there we go perfect so now i'm going to grab this object right here let's apply the subdivision modifier so that's like done it's permanent and then to this one we're going to add a boolean modifier and the object is going to be this guy right here and it's going to be a difference now what i can do here is with this one I can go to the object display and on the object display, one of the things that we can do is we can change the visibility or the viewport display so that this is displayed as a wire. That way we should be able to see what's going on there. Now what I'm uh, like immediately seeing is that the Boolean is now working perfectly and I think it's because I need to apply the transforms to this guys. So let's try applying transforms there. Let's go back to this guy. Do it again. Is it doing proper intersection? I just want to make sure that it's intersecting properly. It seems to be intersecting properly. Um, let's also apply transformations to this one just in case. And now let's add again the Boolean modifier. There we go. And we select that cube right there. There we go. If we do fast solver, as you can see right there, we're going to get a slightly better result. Let's go shade the uh, flat so we can see the effect first. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this cube and I'm going to do a uh, mirror modifier. We're going to be using the, the empty. So let's do X and Y. So both sides. And there you go. Now we can even go to this objects and on the options, we can go to the visibility and on the viewport display, uh, we can say bounce. So it's just a box. And as you can see, that's how the, the Boolean operation is going to be working. So now the only thing I need to do is I need to go to the blade itself and the Boolean. I'm just going to say apply. So now this cubes, we can actually delete and the Boolean is going to be there. Right click. Let's see if we can shade smooth. Ah, we get some really weird shades. We can try shade auto smooth. There we go. That looks a little bit better. And look at that. 
we get the very nice boolean there on the uh, on the blade itself. Uh, let's just add the. I'm gonna add the little like red elements as extra elements. I know we could do booleans, but I feel like that's gonna like create a slightly like weird uh, artifact right there. This one we definitely need to scale a little bit less, so that it does not touch the hand guards as much. And then we're gonna jump very quickly into into rendering. I promise we're we're about to finish this, my friends. So probably like a couple like like 15 more minutes or something. Thanks again for being here, guys. Two hours. We're also going to be doing like long stream versions. Like on the YouTube channel, we, we used to do a smaller, like uh, like one hour live streams. But I feel like with one hour, we can't really cover that much. So we're probably going to have longer, longer versions of streams. There we go. So this is going to be the cube right there. Let me hide everything. There we go. So this one's going to go there. This one's going to go there. This one's going to go there. And then shift D. This one's going to go there. That one's going to go there. That one there. And that one there. Perfect. Grab both of them. Control J. Scale on Y to make them a lot thinner. Scale on Y. There we go, something like that. What is my favorite course that I have created? Ooh, that's a great question. I, I'm gonna have to say the the character, the Tyros character, the, the fantasy character, you know, the bearded demon guy. That was a great course. Uh, but I, I'm doing one right now, the one that I'm doing right now, I'm really, really enjoying it. We got a very, very cool concept and it's looking very, very nice. It's, uh, again, as I mentioned, it's a weapon for games. So it's gonna be very, very fun. Should be releasing very soon. What platforms do you guys use the most from the from the courses that you've uh, gotten from me? Because we're gonna be releasing this one in the, um, uh, in Udemy, but if there's other like platforms that you guys use, let us know and uh, and we can look into that as well. There we go. So now we can bring everything back. This guys, a G and Y. Udemy, perfect. Yes. Yeah, Udemy is one of the of the main places. R a G. G and Y. Just gonna give them a very, very like small extrusion right there. I feel like they're a little bit to the side. Let's bring them a little bit closer to the center. And then let's just add a modifier, mirror modifier. We're gonna be using the empty, and there we go. And of course, we're also gonna be mirroring on the Y axis. And there we go. Two hours of modeling, of a speed run modeling. And we were able to get this very, very nice sword. Let's now throw in some materials. What do you guys think? Let's throw in some materials and uh, and let's see how, how we can make this thing look. So let me move this to the side. First, I'm going to go to the environment and I'm going to bring in an HDRI. So let's bring an environment texture, open, and downloads. Let's grab the, do I have a... HDRI over here. Yeah, we got this like hiker's cave. Let's use that one. And now on the render options, I'm going to be using cycles and I'm going to be using GPU to make this a lot faster. So if we jump into render, this is what we should have. There we go. Not bad. So we can grab pretty much all of the pieces. I'm gonna add a new material. Let's make this metallic. Let's make a darker color. And let's bring the roughness down a little bit. We can use anisotropy, which is gonna like give us a, a more like metallic look. And then what we can do is we can select all of the other pieces except for the blade. 
So like this guy, this guy. Let's go to to material preview. So this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. And then at the end, we select this one and we're going to go object and we're going to do link and we're going to transfer materials. So now all of them have the same material. This guy's right here. We're going to add a new material. It's going to be sort of like a red color. So let's make them metallic as well, just for fun. And if we go to render, we're going to have a nice effect right here. There we go. This one, I think we can go with the metal material as well. Same for this one. Mm -hmm. There's like a red material on top here. So one thing you can do is you can actually grab some faces. And then um, you can um, you can grab another material like this one and actually let's assign those to select it. And then let's grab the metal material. Hey. Sign. Oh no, we're gonna assign a new slot here. There we go. And then this new slot's gonna be the red color. And now we grab the faces that we wanna add the red color to and we assign. There we go. So over here, we're going to have to add like another edge loop so that we can select the faces and assign them as well. It goes all the way to the top. So we got to be very careful here. This one, am I using a modifier? Yeah. Okay. Let's apply the modifier so that I know all of the faces that I need to select. There we go. If we go to the materials, we're going to assign. There we go. Cool. Yeah. So I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty much it, my friends. <laughs> um, let's play a little bit with the lights. Lights are always an important part. So I'm going to bring the lights all the way down to like a minus one and let's add a backdrop. So I'm going to add a plane. We're going to rotate this in X. Let's go to our camera. I'm going to change the resolution of the camera. I'm going to do this a vertical resolution. So it's going to be 1080 by 1920. By 1920. There we go. And one thing I like to do with the camera is I like to go here to a view and use the camera to view. This one moves a little bit closer to what I normally use instead of Maya. There we go. The plane, we're going to add a dark color to the plane. So let's go for like a nice dark color. And now let's bring in some more like dynamic lights. Here's where the vertical split works really nice because what we can do is on, on this one right here, we can have the perspective view, which I'm going to be working in the like solid mode. And over here, we can go to the shot, like the, the render shot, and we can keep this in, in, mo in render mode. So that what I add over here in perspective will be reflected here on the, on the render mode. So for instance, I think adding a, a strong light on the top might be a good idea. So let's go light. Let's do an area light. Push this up. Point it towards the element, make it a little bit bigger. And we're really going to bring the power up to so like 4,000 or something. There we go. Actually, let's go, let's go like a traditional, like three point light. So by the way, we have, uh, I just uploaded a video on the, on the YouTube page about lighting here inside of Blender and, uh, and you can do a very nice three point light setup for your presentations. So there we go. This one, I'm going to make it like a little bit warm on the colors. And then I'm going to duplicate this one, have it on the other side, coming from the back. There we go. And we're going to go for a cool light instead. And then I mean to, to give it an even more like interesting look. Why not? Whoa. 
why not bring one on the bottom here? There we go. Let's let's go to the camera here and frame this a little bit better so it's like right there on the center. I'm not sure what happened to this one. It's supposed to be a, a very dark color. It's getting quite illuminated, so I'm going to increase the roughness even more or less. I don't know. Eh, kind of glossy looks interesting. And now we're going to go to rendering. Let's give this 30 seconds to render. And I'm just going to say a render, render image. And let's see how this looks. Not bad, not bad for the model. Again, some good textures and this thing, it's gonna look pristine. I think this could look really, really nice with some good textures. I'm probably gonna be doing a video about that. Not sure yet, but uh, probably. Yeah. So that's pretty much it, my friends. After this, the next part is a little bit of compositing, you know, like um, some uh, depth of field or maybe some like a vignette, something like that. And uh, and we can get something really, really interesting. But I think in regards to the details, we managed to get really, really close. With more time, I'm, I'm, I'm certain we could get uh, even closer to some of the details for the sword. But not bad for a, for a two hour stream to show some of the tools that we have here inside of uh, Blender, right? Now, as I mentioned, the next course that I'm going to be um, releasing is going to be a weapon for games course where we will go over this and way more, way, way more. I think right now I've recorded like six or seven hours and it's just modeling, like just modeling and sculpting a high poly of the element. So it's really, really, really in-depth and we're going to be able to get an even better result. That's why I always tell you guys on the on the videos, right? Like. Time is a huge, huge part of this whole process. So the more time we invest into building something, the better the results that we're going to be able to get. So, yeah, I, I, I think that's, uh, that's it, my friends. I am, uh, I'm really thankful for the support. I, I don't even know. I'm, I'm not keeping track of how many viewers we had throughout this session, but we've had up to 20 uh, like concurrent viewers, and that's amazing. I was expecting to have like two or three. <laughs> so having 10 times that is just amazing, my friends. Thank you very much for, for your support. Uh, this whole live stream, like exactly how you saw it, is going to be up on YouTube. So feel free to watch it there if you want to follow specific parts of the of the process. And uh, we're also going to have, uh, yeah, more and more stuff from this so thanks thanks thank you very much my friends thank you Sarn for for being here as a moderator and if you guys want to follow with more of the stuff that we're going to be doing make sure to check the discord channel where we're going to be updating all the information we got like polls and uh, tips and tricks we got the portfolio reviews like a lot of different things so yeah make sure to to follow there as well um that's it for now I'm going to close the stream and I'm going to keep working on the premium course, my friends. So stay in tune. Make sure to hit all of our socials and I'll be seeing you back on the next one. Bye-bye.